Blog Talk Radio. This is West Virginia Championship Wrestling Weekly Recap. Tonight we'll discuss today's television broadcast and the upcoming TV tapings. And good evening everybody, it's Tojo here. Uh, I'm waiting on Randy Hicks to call in so he can add his content to this, but once again we're back with the recap again. Uh, big week, big week on TV, pretty big week on Spotlight. Got a, had a little more scuttlebutt flying around on the Facebook we'll get into. A couple announcements about Fall Brawl that came in today. And uh, and a few things about Saturday night. The Saturday night, Princeton Rec Center. Big street fight. Me and J.C. Dodge going to knock it up head-to-head. Should be a really good match, at least for me. I'm hoping he can walk out of the building somewhat afterwards. Um, but Saturday night. The name of the show is Back to School Bash. It's going to be a huge TV taping. I believe we're, t- we're going to film at least three episodes, plus have the untelevised street fight. And, you know, there's a lot of questions going on about that. We'll go into a few of those now. Um, I, I received a text message earlier stating that the uh, bandit of the Bunkhouse Boys is going to be uh, going on the hunt. Now, we have no clue what the hunt he's going in the hunt of, but we'll find out on Saturday night if he show up. Now, speaking of showing up, will William Lavelle show up? I mean, we've had we've had a lot of talk about it, and we don't really know what's going on there. So we got to see what we got going where, and on all that. And uh, do we have Rando on the line? Yes, we do have Rando on the line. Yay! Rando made it out of the mountains. Good deal. Aha! But um, and then I, I, I was just running through. You know, some of the questions I've got about the. You know, about the big TV tape on Saturday night in Princeton at the rec center. You know, you got the street fight, not much question there. It's going to be a war. I hope to come out of it victorious, but I know I will not be unchanged. Bandit is on the hunt. Did you get the text message about this, Rando? Uh, I'm just completely lost. I'm not really uh, sure how exactly I actually called into the show tonight, but... Uh... It's, what it's, you it's crazy, about? man. I, I got a text message today, and and all it said was, "Bandit says he's on the hunt." <laughs> now it came from it came from one of them throwaway phones. I don't know if he had a throwaway phone or, you know, it's just somebody trying to you know get, get, give me the buzz. Now I'm not sure what Bandit's on the hunt for. It's kind of scary, Bandit. Bandit's a bad man. I mean, I've I've went up and down with him two or three times and it's you know it's not an easy fight and i feel sorry for anybody he's on the hunt of now i guess saturday well, night you may find out just exactly who he is after and well then, you gotta uh, remember also yep. uh you know he yeah, he made his intentions known um i don't know he's uh he's a wild card he is he's just kind of out there and I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen with that. And then you know the biggest question of all, and I, this one, uh, I touched on it briefly right as you called in. Um, it's really a big question with the Facebook fans. It's uh, been all over the internet for basically a month now. Will William Lavelle show up? I mean, the mythical creature that he is, almost like a unicorn. I mean, I know he's out there. Okay, and look, I have no he, doubt he's not the. Look, um, William Lavelle is is a douchebag. Period. I know exactly who he is. I'm not going to be you know Dude. one of these guys that's going to add him, but you know I, I know who William Lavelle is. But okay. you know what? Straight up, William Lavelle is a douche. You have nothing to worry about. Nobody has anything to worry about. This whole thing about William LaFell and this army and, and garbage is exactly that, garbage. All right? Because I know the man personally. He's a complete and total fucking scumbag. Period. So just. Just, yeah. just fucking let it go and it just let it disappear and, and the faster that the people just let it go when he has no more attention on him he'll be gone. Well, 
let's let's hope that's how it works out. Let's hope that, you know that we don't want it, we don't want it to be a, become something that you know that hurts the product as a whole. And then I've got I got a thing written here, and, and truly, it's something that's near and dear to my heart because I've been I've I've been a predominantly tag team wrestler most of my career. What's up with the tag team division, man? I mean, the, the last TV taping, Benny was there, but Dog was gone. Neither one of the Throbs were there. We only had one OSE member there. As I mean, what's up? Well, you got to remember oh, that. Uh, uh, you got to remember also that that this time of year, professional wrestling really does take off on an independent level. Um, you have different places that are just snapping at the bit, and you know, just you know, they're running two, three shows a month when they would run two shows during the whole winter season. So that, yeah. that's what's happening. You have all these other independent companies that are running a, a higher schedule, and it, it, it's attracting other talent, which I think is a great thing, you know, especially for WVCW because it gets our name out there um, when um, our stars are – Doing well in, in other territories. Oh well, and they're going out on tour. I mean, you know, and the the, the you know one of the biggest tours any of the WCW stars have went on this summer is uh, the champion, the West Virginia champion, Scotty Reigns. I mean, this oh week yeah. He's third. I mean, he, and, and he's with he's with his other love. I mean, he's got two loves, people. Well, probably three for count the kiddos, but he loves his wrestling. He's, a, he's highly committed to it, loves what he does. But really and truly, he loves his music, too. And he's had a really big weekend on the music. Uh, the other night, he opened for Black Label Society, him and his band Low Life. Uh, he was on stage I singing with Bret Michaels. Uh, I think that was Sunday night. Monday, he opened for Gretchen Wilson. And uh, I believe he's opening for Big and Rich come this Friday or Saturday. I mean, it's it's, yeah, it's every day you can get the message from Scotty, just bragging and loving everything that he's doing. And and you, you got to love it. He's got that belt right there with him the whole time. It's really, it's it's really it really makes us proud. It's really, it's a, it's good. But, yeah, it, it, but it I, is good. It really is good from from like a, a public uh, from a PR point of view. It is a good thing. But let's be realists, okay? Mm-hmm. I understand that the uh, West Virginia champion, um, you know, he, he's top dog in the company. Mm-hmm. Uh, he should be featured as top dog in the company. There ain't no reason why he needs to go out there and try to kill himself, you know, and every single night we go on tour or whatever. Uh, but where has he been? He's now, been out on the road. He was it. He's been out indulging. He's been on the road. Love. So, you know, now, again, he, he, I, I like to play devil's advocate in case the people that oh, haven't listened in for, you know, I, I like to, to look at the other point of view. And, uh, mm-hmm. and, and so it makes sense of things. I love me some Scotty Reigns. I, I can't wait to see him back in WVCW and, and defending that title. And the fact that he's going out and he's doing these great things while representing WVCW, I think that's awesome. But at the same time, I think you're cheating the fans by not giving them their champion. Yeah, that's just that's just me. I'm like, you know, I'm five. That's just me. Yeah, but the good news is Scotty Reigns is coming back home soon. They won't be there this Saturday. And for those who made it to the camp show, the 4-H camp show, with the the Elk Special Projects show we did last month, uh, he did have a title defense there, and it was quite an amazing one. And I believe if if everything is in my mind properly, in about three weeks we'll see that on on an episode of television. So there is some Scotty. Scotty Reigns is coming, folks. He's, he hasn't forgotten us. He's coming back, and he's going to be coming back in a big way. But I guess you know we're All talking right. about the West Virginia champion. Well, no, well, that's, that's um, no, no. What? 
this is supposed to be the TV recap, is it not? Mm-hmm. Let's talk and that's what about I'm to. TV. Well, let's talk about it. Today was a big day. It's probably one of the biggest days of television that WBCW's had because it was every match was a first round match for the television title. And, um, you know, I've got a special near and dear to my heart thing going on with this. But uh, I, I guess we'll just run down the matches. Uh, I'll get your thoughts here, Randall. I'm sure you've seen it. Uh, you, you're a loyal watcher and follower and all that. Uh, the first match in the I was calling the, the match. Was J- yeah. J.C. Dykes versus Eric St. Clair, first round of the tournament. Your thoughts on the match? My thoughts on the match were, uh, you know, again, it was a rematch from where the two of them were competing for the West Virginia Championship. And J.C. Dykes, not only the second time, proved himself to be the better man. Um, i got to yeah. give credit where credit is due. I really don't care for the bastard, but uh, that's just me. It was, you know, yeah. it was it was entertaining. Um, I'm just disappointed that world class can pull it out. Well, I'm I, I'm disappointed Eric couldn't too. I mean, because really, truly, really, when I looked at the brackets for this tournament, I saw I saw two shots for the outlaws there. You know, I I don't get many title shots, so I was indeed happy. That I was getting, the t- I was getting a chance in this tournament. But the big thing that I saw was, you know, we got a quarter of this tournament locked up. That's a one in four shot. One or the other of us is walking out with that title, and I like those odds. And you know, you see, hit him with the powder, and you know, the powder is a recurring thing here recently, it seems. And I personally, I'm I'm not scared of the powder. Well. If he gets me with it, he gets me with it. But he's got to throw it awful damn high to get it in my eyes. So we'll get to that, that later. What but kills, no, no. You know what? Let's just stop right there. That is what kills me. Powder. Obvious evidence laying on the campus. And yet and the faces. WBCW officiating staff does nothing about it. They're blind to, to everything. They're, they're Something is going on. Something big is going on. And they are involved in it. They are as deep as it. And I'm just, I'm at a loss for words. I, yeah. I'm at the end of my room. I I just, I'm, I'm just so, I'm just so disappointed in the way things have turned out here in the last couple of months here in WBCW. But that's just me. Give me my personal opinion. Yeah. Just very disappointed. Yeah, it's 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 really hard. It's um and and, and I'm not going to say that the referees have an easy job because it's 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 a really hard job. I've been a special ref on numerous occasions, and they can keep that job. I don't want it. It's a thankless job because you're out there to enforce rules, and sometimes you miss them. Sometimes you miss stuff. Sometimes you got to do the right. What's the right thing by the book when it's not the right thing by your heart? And it's really a hard thing, and but I'm hoping I'm hoping everything's going to get settled up because you know this Saturday night there's going to be an open forum Q and A. Uh, St. Clair and um, Andrew Gibson are going to be the the main talkers, I believe, on this. But it's going to happen before the actual uh, show. When the doors open at seven, I think the uh, Q and A session will start about five minutes after. That way, some people allow people to get in, and I believe they are going to answer questions from the crowd. So if, you know. If you're coming to the event, you're part of the nation, and and you got something you want to say about officiating, about just what about the horse crap that's been going on? Walk up to the mic, ask your question. You'll get an answer. You may not like it, but you'll get an answer. But uh, as far as TV goes today, after the Dykes Sinclair match with Dykes going over, uh, when in when in the bout there, uh, we had a pro, had an interview with Daniel Halen, and he laid out a pretty serious challenge. I mean, he, he explained why he wasn't in the TV title tournament. It was because he didn't want to be, because Kurt Taylor wasn't in it. And he wants Kurt Taylor, and he laid out the challenge that they're going to have a best-of-seven series if 
if it's accepted by Kurt, which, I mean, I think Kurt's got enough testicular fortitude. He might accept that, especially if only he's got JC and uh, this mysterious Lavelle cat in his corner, like it seems like he does. What do you think about the best of seven series coming up there, Rando? Yeah, I think the best of seven series is, is it's going to be a hot ticket. It really is. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got uh, – let's face facts. Miracle on the Mountain 3 – those two guys went out there and they performed a uh, a very uh, a very hot match the entire yes, time. Yes, it did. The entire time. Um, I don't want to be so bold and so brazen as to call it the best match I've ever seen. Um, it was the best match of tonight. But I am going to sit here and say that it was great. Both worked their damn asses off. And uh, they went out there and they had a legit. I don't like Kurt. Okay, look. Okay, look. I'm. I don't like Kurt. I don't like Kurt. Personally, I don't like Kurt. I don't like talking about him. I think he's a punk. I think he's a little bitch. I think he just. uh, He just needs to go away. Yeah, needs to go away. But that's. But that's. That's me from a personal level, not from a company level. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I I, I truly believe that when all's said and done, and we look back on this down the road many years, a lot of things are going to come out of this best of seven series that these two are going to have. If Kurt accepts, now that's the key thing. Kurt's got to be man enough to accept, and, you know, I hope he is. But if this comes to fruition, we're looking at, quite possibly something that's two, three years down the line people are gonna look back at and say, I was there for that. And that's that's what all that's what all wrestlers want. They want to have people to down the road be able to say, I was there when he did this. And I really think that's gonna be good. But moving on into the t- rest of the t- the T V show, we had Benny finally facing off with Arsenal in another t- uh, tournament match. Good match. Uh Arsenal was trying his best. Every little trick he could come up with. But Benny came out on top. And, uh, you know, we can't, a lot of people, everybody loves Benny. But the thing you got to remember with Benny is this ain't his first rodeo when it comes to the TV title. He's held the belt two or three times now at this point, And three it's like times. old hat to him. And I, it's almost like he's got a magnet on his waist attracting that belt back to him every time he turns around. And really and truly, uh, that's really about anything you got to add about Benny, Benny and his win over the Arsenal. Nope. No, no I'm, I'm, we'll move on. No, I'm, I, no, I'm just kidding. No, honestly, uh, Benny Conley, uh, um, I've been a supporter of his for years. Um, he has uh, really come into his own. He's Learning more, you can see it in his work, and uh, he deserves this win. He deserves to go on, and if if the TV championship happens to go right back around his waist, then maybe they've got to tell you something. For as young as he is, to hold the television championship for four times? That's more than anyone else has ever held it. I mean... And truly, it, it speaks volumes that maybe Benny, Benny's finally turned into the man we think he could be. We all, you know, a lot of us helped in the bringing up of Benny. And he's really turned into a fine young man. And he, I really think he's getting ready to transition himself on up the card and be a serious contender for a West Virginia title, if not other titles in other places, because he is he's becoming very – very legitimate. People don't look at him and laugh anymore, and that, and that, and that, and that, 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 that makes my heart smile. Anytime I, I watch him in the ring, from the mannerisms and and the moves he performs and his offense and his defense, I am reminded of three individuals. You, the mighty Hojo, J.C. Dykes Jr. 
and David Lynch. Period. Uh, we've all played, at, at various times, we've all played major parts in the grooming of Benny. Uh, if I would have, if, if there was ever anybody I could say I might have trained, because I, I've, I've never trained anyone for this business, and I probably never will, Benny's about as close as I've ever come to it. But um, I guess we got about 10 minutes, but we need to mosey on down the list here. Uh, the next matchup was uh, the Mighty Hojo versus the Silencer. Uh, not much needs said about that other than you whooped his ass. Not. You whooped his ass. Not. You Poor broke his TV. damn ribs. You broke eight ribs. You <sighs> broke him in half. He pulled a finger gun on me. That's enough on that. I won. I advanced. We don't need to go into that anymore. That was a broken wrist. Ka-ching! Mighty Hojo. Yeah. And then the fight, the main event of the day and the last match in the tournament for this week saw a Dangerous Dave Scott, uh, the only OSE member in attendance, I believe. I uh, really didn't see any other ones on TV, on the TV, or I don't really remember any others from the taping. And he took on Elijah O'Malley, another former television champion. So it was a really good match. Um, Dave Scott came out in the end. Um, good back and forth affair. What are your thoughts on it, Rando? Oh, uh, it was. Uh, interesting. It, 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 it took me back. It, uh, I'm, a, I'm a very big fan of West Virginia wrestling. I've been following uh, mm-hmm. follow it for quite some time, and it uh, you know, it took me back quite a few years to another promotion, and uh, um, I just uh, to be honest that uh, something wasn't there. Mm. Don't get me wrong, it was a good match. It was a good match, but there was something that, you know, I was expecting. I was like, some sort of magic. The magic wasn't there. Man, and, that uh, happens sometimes. But still, you know, it was, uh, it was a pretty good sneaky move by uh, Mr. Dave Scott to go ahead and hit there with the uh, handful of dots. You know, it, you know, the That's... referee said WVCW isn't the greatest anymore, and... Uh, so you might as well take advantage of that. Hell, why not? Yeah, yeah, take it you know, just, uh, just, uh, just a myth in WVCW. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't fault anyone for pulling tights. I've done it before myself. I'm not, a, I'm not the whitest sheep in the flock, shall we say? Now, but that, that, and that, and that was that was uh, what what we had happen on the television today. If you missed it, you want to go back and watch it. Look for it on the YouTube. Uh, WVCW TV on the YouTube. Uh, all the episodes are there, all the way dating back to the very first one that was in the Powell Center three years ago. So a, a lot has changed, a lot, and a lot's the same. But go check it out if you haven't ha- had a chance yet. Now I'm going, I'm going to breeze over Spotlight because truly Spotlight today wasn't there. There's a lot of it was repeat content. We had a Bandit taking on Connor Long from a couple weeks back. Uh, really good match. Just you know, and Bandit Bandit was out there talking about, you know, it might play into this whole he's on the hunt thing. You know, he's kind of upset with the board of directors telling him he had to show up. And then uh, we also had a, a actually had a an interview with uh, Scotty Range. He was there at the Full Throttle Saloon in Sturgis talking about um, his appearances there this week. There was a replay of the six man match from last week, the main event on television, that um, actually featured the Arsenal. Jack Miller, Elijah O'Malley, and um, they were taking on Mike McCabe and the Silencer. The Silencer. And Jake Jacob. Yeah, and, ja- and Jake Jacobs. And it was the Silencer. Last week I kept saying Dave Scott, but it was the Silencer. I'm assuming I may have imbibed too many adult beverages before I started speaking on that. And then the. Uh, and then the main event on Spotlight this week, of course, is a, is a match from a few years back. It's the uh, 
actually the first ever meeting of uh, myself and uh, J.C. Dykes Jr. It's the first time we ever met in the ring. I don't think we'd actually met met in uh, person until that day. And uh, it's a dog collar match that was held in Mabscott, West Virginia, for a, a, promo, a promotion. I can't remember what the initials were at that point. It might have been UPWA. I was there at, I was there for that uh, for that event, and it was yeah. interesting. <laughs> yeah, it, it was interesting. Uh, when you watch the footage, it's a little dark. We were in a bar, and uh, there, there's a, a few things that you'll you'll see that uh, you've heard me or JC talk about over the years, including the uh, infamous uh, tape measure uh, Beal into the infamous tape measure, pull the chain, make him levitate and fly back 20 foot into the ring. But uh, check that out, Spotlight. Check it out. It's it's there on the TV page, you know, Facebook.com backslash WBCW TV. Give them a look. Give both shows a look. Give us some feedback right there on the links. Tell us what you think, what you liked, what you didn't like. That's the only way we know. Now, the only other thing I've got written down here that we need to go over, and we've got a couple minutes left to do it in, is Fall Brawl. Now, Fall Brawl is a yearly event. Uh, we've been lucky enough to uh, have, have been the company to have it for the last two years. Uh, last year's show was called by many the show of the year. Uh, the crowd down there, it's, in, it's held in more West Virginia. It's part of the fall festival. We actually kick off the festival. Uh, bell time's usually around 6, 6.30. It might even be pushed to 7. I'm not sure. But uh, a lot of big happenings were announced today. Uh, last week it was announced that George is going to be there. It's the first time George South has been to McDowell County in 20 years. That's a really – and that's a big thing because 20 years ago when George was, in, was running – Shows in this in this state. It was the last time that he was in McDowell County, so I'm, I'm, I know he's really looking forward to getting back down there and meeting the people that he knew back then, and giving the good people in McDowell County a chance to see him. Uh, there's been signed a television title match between myself and J.C. Dykes Jr. Uh, we're not sure who the champion will be because that's yet to be determined. But there will be a, that's where the first three matches. I can will never be. understand that. I can never understand that. How can you book? A television title match when there is no television champion. Well, the way the way it's worked out, the board of directors informed me how this is going to work. The match Saturday, there must be a winner, and whoever walks out as champion has to defend against the other person in war on September the thirteenth. And it's 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 a it's a fair thing, I believe. I mean. I mean, I know that if I if I am to win the title Saturday night, I would be more than willing to give J.C. Dykes or any man a shot at it. So the fact that they want to go ahead and schedule that and let people know, hey, we're going to have a winner here, and the winner's going to defend here, that's a good thing. I mean, it's more title defenses than some champions do in a year. But, and then the other big announcement is Old School Elite is going to face off with the Universal Heartthrobs for the West Virginia Tag Team titles in war. Wow. So, so that that that's right there is going to be a big match, uh, especially, I mean, with the with the throbs coming off the injuries at the hands of the old school elite. I'm glad they petitioned and got this match, and it's going to be a really hot one. Uh, I have no doubts on that in my mind. And uh, I'm really looking forward to Paul Brawl. I'm looking forward to the television tape in this Saturday, Princeton Rec Center. Back to school bash with the street fight. Three three big episodes being taped. It's going to be great. And just remember, people, we are West Virginia Championship Wrestling. We are your professional wrestling in the state. We are here to serve you. Now, you want to come out and see the shows? Great. You want to sit home and watch the television? Great. You want to watch it on the YouTube? Great. Let us know you're doing it. Send word to us. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. The only way we can make it what you want is if we know what you want. And, hey, uh, Jim. Looks like I think we got about 30 seconds, Rando. Any closing thoughts you have for the week? None whatsoever. I just want to see everybody there on Saturday. That's right, Saturday. Come on out. See us at the show. We'll shake your hand, might even kiss your baby. 
But tonight, this is for Randos and Hojo, and we're signing out.